Okay, hi everybody and welcome to Lab 3, First Order Transient Circuits. And welcome to my kitchen table again, and this is the equipment that we'll be using. The Hantec oscilloscope. Uh, I'm only showing one probe, but we're actually using two probes. Uh, we will be using the multimeter again to measure our components and our DC voltages. The header board, which I have set to 5 volts, the Solbay power supply, some jumper cables, some capacitors, some resistors, and a push-button switch, which I'll be using to, uh, to act as the charge-discharge switch. So that's it. So here's my multisend drawing. You can see I'm using 5 volts. J1, or key A, is going to be my charge-discharge switch, and I'm using two capacitors in parallel to give me 100 nanofarads. All right, so let's build a circuit. First thing I want to show you is this uh, is this switch. The uh, the switch I've noticed is only a single pole, single throw switch, even though it has four legs. And it's the two closer legs that are actually the switch. So the both sets are the same. So you can put them into your breadboard with just one. Uh, one bus between them and then what I like to do is I like to put jumpers on them to interface it to the rest of the board so that I can get to the switch relatively easily hopefully to uh, to do some of my measurements so we're gonna speed things up a bit here so we're not spending a whole lot of time here I am uh, building the first side of the circuit which is just the uh, the resistor network uh, from my 5 volt supply and then I'm going to put the two capacitors in parallel. A little tricky, I'm actually using needle nose pliers here to get them in properly. You can pick these up at Dollarama for a couple of bucks, I highly recommend it. That black wire is my ground. And these are now my discharge resistors. I've hooked one up to the switch and the other one goes to ground. Once I get it in there, a little stubborn, there we go, and that's the circuit built. So now I just need to hook up my scope probes. I hook up my ground for one probe, and like I said before, the grounds are common, and this is gonna go on one side of the switch, and the other one is gonna go across the capacitor. So here's the hand tech. I'm gonna hit the, uh, the channel button, and you can see I'm on channel one. And it's enabled, and it's DC coupled, and on the second page, I've got the probe set to time one, and bandwidth limit and cup and uh, inverter off channel 2 is exactly the same oh no not a hundred let's change that wow that let's change that to times one off and off all right so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check our voltages this matches my multi sim uh, 200 millivolts and the time base of 50 microseconds is also the same so now what we have to do is we have to set up the triggering so I'm gonna hit the trigger button because we're looking for a single waveform. We're looking for a trigger event and then the waveform. So right now the trigger says I'm triggering on channel two. I actually want to trigger on channel one. The slope says it's falling. I want it to be on rising. And I don't want it on auto. I just want a single sweep. So I set that to single. Now the, uh, the trigger is preset by hitting the run play button. So I cycle it off. I turn it on and there's nothing on the screen. And if you look at the screen now, here we go. So you'll see in the top left hand corner it says wait. That means it's waiting for the trigger signal. And on the top right you'll see that there's a little uh, yellow one and it shows you the trigger voltage and the slope. So I turn the power on, I hit the button and bingo, I now have a waveform. So there it is, I've triggered it. You can see the, the immediate voltage spike, which is my, my trigger voltage, and then you can see the charge slope. And on the, on the top right, you can see all the settings for the, uh, for the triggering. So I'm actually triggering at 584 millivolts. Now I'm bringing these, uh, both these waveforms down a little bit so they're easier to see. I'm not taking voltage measurements. Uh, I've done this and it matches my multi-SIM. So your voltage will be whatever it is that you set up. And I'll reset it and I'll push the button again. And there you go, another waveform. So that is now our charge curve. And you can see here, like I said, the, the triggering is set to 584 millivolts. Now you can scroll this up and down. What you do is you hit the uh, the trigger button again and you use the up and down arrows and you can change your triggering. So here I'm triggering at 80 millivolts. All right. Or 
I can move this all the way up, all the way up above the trigger voltage. So if I scroll up, I think the trigger voltage here is 1.22 volts. If I go above that and I reset it and I push the button, nothing happens because it never sees a trigger of 1.26 volts. The trigger has to be down within the waveform. There it is, 896 millivolts. I trigger it and I get the signal again. So that's the charge curve characteristic that we're trying to measure with the circuit. The next thing we're going to do, this is, uh, oh, right, my multi-sim, of course. So here is the multi-sim of, uh, of my charging curve. Uh, you can see that I've got 1.19 volts, and I think on my scope I measured 1.22, so that's not too bad. And you can see that the charging profile is uh, almost identical to what I got on the Handtech. All right, so now let's go back to this. If I if I trigger this now for falling, so I'm pushing the button, holding it, and releasing it, and yeah, that's kind of messy. Uh, you're going to have to play with this a bit. I think... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the trigger level down to a lower value and then I'm going to push and hold the power button then release it there we go there's a cleaner signal so now you can see the voltage going down it's triggering at 320 millivolts and there's the discharge curve which is exactly what we wanted to look like so here's my multi sim of that you can see that the curves that I got on my multi-sim are very close to the curves that I got in real life on the Handtech. Again, the, the voltage at this point is going to be zero volts because I've opened the key A and I get the discharge rate and using the cursors and using the scope screen, you can identify what your voltages are. So that's it for this lab. Uh, the big trick here is the triggering. You're going to have to play with that to figure that out well. And... Um, yeah, that's uh that's it. So that's lab 3.